Hi there, this is Curtis Palmer. How are you today? I consider it an honor and a privilege to be before you today. You know, I consider it just a great opportunity to share with you. Um, and reminding you, my ministry is a ministry of righteousness. Uh, my ministry was um, to teach God's people what true salvation is and how to live in obedience to God's word. That's the work that God has called me to do. Uh, that's why if you see my message is always talking about your lifestyle. Um, and regardless, uh, your walk with God, the end product is supposed to be uh, living a self-controlled life through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is characterized by righteous living. So, you are born again. You are a child of God. Now what? What are you to do? What's required of you? Well, if you are born again, one of the first places you should have been taken uh, to instruct you on what's required of you is Romans chapter 6 uh, Which states that if you have been raised with Christ, I'm going to read it for you here. It says um, Therefore No, no now if we have died with Christ We believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead is never to die again Death no longer has mastery over him for the death he, that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. So, if you are born again, you are a child of God. Your first objective is, is to consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. What does that mean? That means that uh, you are no longer to allow sin to rule in your mortal bodies. Uh, you're no longer to present your body as instruments of unrighteousness. But you're supposed to be presenting yourself to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. How can we do such a thing when Jesus is the only one that is perfect? That's a good question. Well, if you're truly born again, God did some spiritual surgery on you that you had no control over. Uh, you find that in Ezekiel chapter 28, I believe. Uh, let me look for it for a second, and I'll read to you what it says happens uh, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So it's very important that we understand these things because your mind has been programmed in sin and unrighteousness. Uh, it's not going to change overnight. It's a process of reprogramming and training, training in the word of righteousness. That's what I do. That's what God has called me to do. That's why I'm coming to you today. Just wanted to share some uh, uh, points with you so you can uh, contemplate on. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36. Uh, started at verse 24. He's talking to the children of Israel. But you know that as Gentiles, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, uh, we are made privy to the uh, covenant promises that God gave the children of Israel, uh, most of them. Uh, you won't get the land of Israel to live in that, but um, you will be able to enjoy the uh, abundant life that God has called for his children to enjoy. Ezekiel 20, 36, 35, I'm sorry, 36. Starting at verse, let me see here, uh, verse 24. I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own uh, land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Let me look at you here. And you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness, and give you a new heart, and put a new spirit in you. Hear what he says? I will give you a new heart. He will clean you from all filthiness. That, that, that means that he'll forgive you for all your sins and never remember them again because the sin that has been paid, God is no longer holding mankind's sins against them. So that even if you're not born again, um, your sin is not an issue with God. You, are, you inherited that. So therefore you don't have to take responsibility for that. But you are going to have to take responsibility for the way you die. And the only way you can do that is you must be born again. Uh, he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinance. See what he says? Now that you're born again, 
God has put you in a position where failure is impossible if you're truly born again. He puts his spirit in you, which is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's responsibility is to lead you into righteousness. So the question is, what are you doing about your spiritual training? Uh, if you're truly born again, uh, because of the new surgery, you should be craving the Word of God like a new baby does milk. That should be a drive in you to always want to read the Word and study the Word because that's the only way you're going to reprogram your mind. It's not about you getting rich, getting the stuff. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, that stuff will be given to you. And if you're in an environment that only focuses on the material aspects of serving God, you might want to read the Word of God yourself and consider uh, moving to a place that's going to be focused on your spiritual growth and development. How will you know uh, that you're in a place that is actually about your spiritual growth and development? Everything that they do, everything that they teach will be about feeding the real you. The spirit man created in the image and likeness of God. The flesh cannot stand the things that feed the spirit man. Uh, Romans chapter 7 talks about that. It says that, um, let me see, verse 21, it talks about the struggle. It says, I'm going to start at verse um, 14. It says, For I know that the law is spiritual, but I am of flesh, sold into bondage to sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For I am not practicing what I would like to do. But I am doing the very thing I hate. But if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing that the law is good. So now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me, which is in your human nature. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. That's the real you. Since your birth, the real you was held hostage to your human nature, your lust and desires. Now that you're born again, your whole focus is to be feeding your spirit man. Your flesh hates everything that he likes. Your flesh loves music with a beat. Spirit man could care less. He wants things coming into him that's going to teach him about God and how to live for God. And how to reprogram his mind. So in this pursuit, what the thing that I would suggest is start doing things that your human nature doesn't like. Listen to music it doesn't like. Deal with people that it doesn't like. Change the way you uh, respond to things in a way that it doesn't like. It might require you to look like a fool sometimes. But God says if you consider it wise in this world, uh, you should become a fool so you can become wise in the things of God. Because we are supposed to be separated from the world. But he goes on to say, For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man, but I see a different law in the members of my body waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. That's why God tells us to reprogram our mind, renew our mind. That's why you must be craving the Word of God, studying the Word of God on a daily basis. And you need a, uh, a life partner, someone to walk with you through your growth process. And if you are in a place that is actually... Uh, about building up your spirit, man, uh, someone should be assigned to you through some discipleship uh, because all hell breaks loose once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You would ask yourself why. Well, when Satan had you, he had no uh, reason to fight against you. You were born his. So he let you go on thinking that you were good, doing things good, but we were all born with a one-way ticket to hell. That's why you must be born again. And once you're born again, you must start over reprogramming your mind. And the best way I tell people that it was possible if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you could start off with amnesia, not knowing anything, and from that point forward, 
started to reprogram your mind and everything in the Bible and set it as the standard for your lifestyle. And you would grow to become that person that God would have you to be. Um, because that's God's purpose. He transforms us into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, each day. wanted to share that with you. You must be craving the Word of God. I have a lot of trainings on my website. If you are interested in some training and uh, reprogramming your mind, reestablishing your new identity in Christ, uh, hit me up or go to the website, uh, predicaments1.com, P-R-E. D I C A M E N T S number one dot com. Um, fill in your contact information. I'll be glad to send you some information out, but I only send it out to those that request it. Uh, it's your growth. Uh, sometimes I find myself more concerned about people's spiritual growth and development and well being than they do, so it's only for those that request it. Have a blessed day. You are now a new creation, so let's start to look like it. Glory to God. Love you. See you next time.